Welcome back to Mathematics Lifeline. In today's video, we're going to do what is, I've always considered to be my favorite optimization problem. So this is a problem that you'll probably encounter in your calculus courses, and we have to maximize area. So this is just, you know, your standard optimization. But I really like this question because as someone who does math just because I love it, uh, this question is just really fun. It tests everything that you need to, to know uh, for optimization, and it really doesn't have a ton of practical applications. It's really just the math behind it. So the question is, find the maximum area of a rectangle inscribed between the curve y equals 16 minus x squared and the x-axis. So I think a logical first step here is going to be to draw out the picture of what's happening here. So let's go ahead and draw our coordinate plane. So this is going to be our y-axis. This will be our x-axis standard coordinate plane here. Now we need to draw the curve y equals 16 minus x squared. Now notice this is the same thing as y equals negative x squared plus 16. So what's happening is this graph of y equals x squared is being reflected about the x-axis and it's being brought up 16 units. So when that is actually drawn, it'll look something like this. Okay, so this is our curve y equals 16 minus x squared. The other boundary portion is going to be the x-axis. So we have that drawn out already. So what we're looking for is a rectangle that's inscribed in this area. So like as an example of what that would look like, it would be something like this. Right, so this, we want to figure out what the maximum area of a rectangle that happens to be in here is. Okay, so when we do these optimization problems, we need to first figure out the formula that we need. So we know that if we're looking for the area of a rectangle, the area of a rectangle is going to be equal to the length times the width, right? Or in this case, we can almost call it width times height, but really it's the same thing. So let's say that this side length is the width and this side length is the length, okay? So what we want to do is get this all in terms of, of one variable. And it's actually going to be easiest if we use x, and here's why. We want to figure out what this entire length is right here, right, whatever this is. Now, it has to be arbitrary because we don't know yet what that length should be. But what we do know is that this is at 0, 0 right here. So the distance between that point and right here is just x units, right? It's whatever the x value is that we're plugging in. So we have the x to the right of the center, and we have the x to the left of the center. So we can say that this side length right here is going to be 2 times x. So in our case, it's 2x. And now we need to multiply by this, this height portion, right? The, the length of the rectangle. Well, we know that this is touching this y equals 16 minus x squared. So whatever this x value is, it goes up to the y value that's associated with it. So the y value or the, the length of this side is just going to be the actual function that we have. So it's times 16 minus x squared. Right, so now we have a setup for the area. So let's go ahead and distribute this out really quick. So we're going to get 2x times 16 is going to be 32x. And then 2x minus x squared is going to be minus 2x cubed. Okay. So this is a function for our area in terms of x. So in terms of how far we go from the origin to the right here. So if we want to maximize the area, we need to actually take the derivative and then look for the critical points. So we're going to take, we'll call it a prime for the derivative. So the derivative of our area function, well, the derivative of 32x is just going to be 32. Minus the derivative of 2x cubed is going to be 6x squared. Okay, so that is the derivative of our area. Now what we want to do is we want to maximize. Or we want to find the critical point, I'm sorry, so, so that we can maximize. So we need to find critical points here. So the way we do that is we actually are going to set this equal to zero, and we're going to see what we can solve for. So if we set this equal to zero, then what we have is 6x squared equals 32, right? And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by 6. So that's going to give me x squared is equal to 32 over 6, but that actually will simplify. We can divide both of those two terms by 2, and we'll get 16 over 3. So I have x squared equals 16 over 3, 
So then now what I want to do is to solve for the x value for my critical point, I just want to take the square root of both sides. So when I do, I'm going to get a plus or minus on the right, but I get x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 16 over 3. But the square root of 16 is 4. So I get plus or minus 4 over square root 3. Okay? So we have two critical points. We have two x values that make this derivative equal 0. Now, generally, you would need to test uh, which one is going to actually give you your max or your min. But since we know that this is actually symmetric about the, the y-axis, we know that if x is just going to be the positive version, we can just say it's positive 4 over root 3. Right, because even if it's negative, we still have the same side length because it needs to be symmetric about the, the y-axis. So you could, in theory, test using like your sign chart and then figure out which one is the max and use that. It'll turn out that it's going to be the positive version. So we're going to say that x for our max is going to be 4 over square root 3, which we could rationalize it and get 4 square root 3 over 3, but that really doesn't matter at the moment. Okay, so we found our x value. So the x value right here is 4 root 3 over 3 or just 4 over root 3. So that means that this entire side length is just going to be double that, right? Because we have to include this length and that length. So we know, and we called that the width. So we'll say the width is equal to 2 times 4 over root 3, which is equal to 8 over root 3. And then the length... Well, we know that we can just take whatever the x value is and plug it into this function. So the length is 16 minus this squared. So 4 over root 3 squared. And that's going to be 16 minus, this turns into 16 over 3. And what that will end up being is, well, if we get a common denominator, we can multiply by 3 over 3. That's going to give me 48 over 3 minus 16 over 3 which that is going to give me 32 over 3. So with that information, I now know that I can find the, the maximum area if I just multiply these two together, right? Um, alternatively, you could use this area function that we made and plug in the 4 over root 3 there. That's, that's perfectly fine as well. Uh, I think I'm just going to go ahead and multiply the length and width because we found them. So we know that area, we'll call it A, is equal to 8 over root 3 multiplied by 32 over 3. Right, and then now whenever we, multi when we multiply these together, we're going to end up getting, so 32 times 8 is going to be 256 over 3 times root 3. And let's see, is that all we can do? I think that's as far as that is going to simplify. So that tells us that our area of this function, or of the maximum rectangle, is going to be 256 over 3 square root 3. So yeah, that, that's it for this video. I, I hope you enjoyed it. This, like I said, this is my favorite optimization problem just because it just tests your fundamental understanding of what's happening with optimization. Right, The setup is even a little bit trickier too. So we have to learn how to set this up properly and then evaluate it using our, our critical points. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. But if not, then I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.